2011, 2017, we threw a small party for our sons for his fifth birthday with his friends from the neighborhood. However, on the 26th until the 28th of that month, he had a fever with symptoms of LBM, although his lab test showed negative results. After five days, high fever recurred. Normally, he remains energetic despite having fever. But that time was different. He was sleeping almost the entire day and lost his appetite for food. That was when we decided to bring him to the hospital to undergo another lab test. When he woke up, my husband noticed his difficulty in speaking that he cannot even fully utter a word. I was shattered that night and cried out to God, Lord, please speak to me and comfort me. I opened my Bible and he spoke to me through Luke chapter 6, verse 21, which says, Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. I closed my Bible with peace in my heart because of God's promise. I believe God had already prepared me beforehand. We decided to bring our son to the ER the next morning. On our way, I tried giving him water, but to our surprise, the water just dripped from his mouth. Now he can't even swallow. Soon after arriving in the ER, he had to be CT scanned and to be put in the ICU. That was our son's first confinement in the hospital, his first ever dextrose, and indeed his first time to be in the ICU. And since ICU in private hospital cost much, we decided to be moved to a government hospital. During the process, the, doc the doctor handed to us the result of the CT scan and explained our son's condition. Our world crashed when the doctor told us that our son's brain was already swollen. Initial diagnosis was meningoencephalitis, a rare medical condition where there is an infection or inflammation of the brain caused by the virus or bacteria and is very fatal. On May 8, he was transferred to the ICU. He had not opened his eyes since then. The doctors informed us that with this kind of disease, the soonest possible time he will wake up is after a month. Hopelessness enveloped us that we just surrendered everything and cried out our hearts to the Lord. Sometimes when we're going through an intense time of adversity, it seems we focus exclusively on the momentary trouble. We fail to see any value whatsoever in our suffering. However, we still choose to believe that God has specific purposes for bringing us through these times of hardship. We just believe that He has the best plans and is in control of everything. But to be honest, this was the lowest point of our lives. We can't hold back our tears seeing our son helplessly lying on the bed in the ICU. His body turning purple because of the many needle injections. The most painful thing for us as parents is that we can only see him one hour a day. But then again, as believers, we will not become stable in our faith until we recognize that believing and trusting God is a choice. So we choose to fix our mind on Him and on His Word. And by His grace alone, we were, a we were even able to share the gospel to some of the patients in the hospital. Truly, God will use any situation in our lives, good or bad, for His glory. As He said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Oftentimes, we do not understand why God brings us into such situations. But one thing is for sure, everything has a divine purpose and God will never abandon us. As he says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
God taught us so many valuable lessons through these pains that we will surely carry with us forever. We desired to have our son back the soonest possible time. But since God's thoughts and ways are higher than ours, we fully entrusted our situation to Him. True enough, after surrendering everything to Him, He gave the desires of our hearts. After three days of being unconscious and in His deep sleep, God brought back the life of our little warrior. Praise God. God is a God who heals and we will not get tired of thanking Him for this miracle. We can't wait to see how God will unfold His plans for our Son in the fullness of His time. We are also very thankful for, uh, for all of our families and relatives, friends, and to all of you, our CCF family, who extended help through prayer and finances. So if you feel hopeless in your situation right now, believe that miracles happen and that God alone can make the impossible possible because only He has the complete knowledge of what each day will hold and He's always ready to respond the moment you cry out to Him. Let's choose to believe that our Heavenly Father will work on our behalf, then focus our attention to Him and claim His promises that apply to the situation we're experiencing. And He will honor our steadfast faith. I am Virna Cesar, mother of a miracle kid and still keeping the faith. To God be all the glory, honor and Jolly.